Hi everyone, welcome to another session. So basically in this session, we are going to learn how we can implement the authentication and authorization into your .NET Core MVC project. Okay, so let me just open our sample application. So here uh, we are having this front end application. In this application, basically uh, we have created one login page. Upon the successful login, I wanted to redirect. I wanted to redirect to the dashboard page and also we wanted to keep who who is logged in what is the role for that user and whether that user has an access to the dashboard page or not or manage courses page or not all these things we can achieve by using the authentication and authorization technique provided by microsoft so let's uh, start the development now you can see i have just run that project where we are having this uh, basic login form if i log in here click on the login then we are making one API call and once we got the response, we are showing the login successfully. Now, whenever I will log into my application, it should sign in to the authentication technique and it should register the role. And also, uh, once it registers that their role, it should be able to verify the permission of that user. Give me a minute. Okay, so uh, if I click on the login button, basically in our application, it will go to the account controller. Inside the account controller, we are having this login action method. And here we wanted to implement authentication. Okay, login successfully. So here we wanted to do these many things to do authentication to do redirect to dashboard page these two things we need to implement here okay this is our post action method and this action method used to get call on clicking off the login button from the browser so if you click on this login button then basically it will call the post action method from the account controller that is your this one okay and here basically we need to implement the authentication so in order to use the authentication we need to configure that first okay so how to configure authentication with our application first of all you will have to go to your startup.cs class okay now i think as we are using dotnet core 7 we do not have the startup.cs class so instead of that startup.cs class you can use program.cs file only okay so in this file we need to add the authentication for our application so in order to add the authentication first of all okay you will have to install one nuget package so that nuget package is this one okay so let's go here right click and then go to the manage nuget packages here go to the browse and search for this package microsoft.asp.net core authentication cookies okay this is provided by microsoft okay 126 million downloads it means it is very important package and you definitely require this for your web application so click here and click on the install button okay once you install that then uh, you will have to add the authentication in the startup.cs file as we do not have the startup.cs file we can just use uh, program.cs file okay go to the program.cs file and this one here you need to add one uh, this is for add use we wanted to add right so for that add code we can add here like this so builder.services okay builder.services add authentication so this is the middleware provided by that package which we just installed okay so in this middleware basically it will help us to enable authentication with our application there are two things what is authentication what is authorization authentication means it will verify the credentials login name and password if it is true then it will sign in or login in in your application that is authentication if it is not correct it will throw you the invalid credential uh, invalid credential uh, 
error message but once you verify your credential it will add the identity of current user into the memory or session we can say and then it will allow you to log in once you log in you can use that memory information or session information in order to identify who is logged in which user is logged in what is the role of that user what is the first name and last name of that user what is the email id of that user all these things you will get from that identity so that's why we require to add this middleware okay so this add cookie add authentication your cookie name should be your application name so my application name is talent to track okay and this is the login path why we require to add this path because if let's say somehow someone does not have an access to any of the method then that user should be get redirect to the login page okay let's say uh, i have one banking application and i do not have an access to uh, the change balance page okay add balance remove balance submit uh, all these things that page has this functionality and i do not have an access i am trying to access that page it will redirect me to the login page if you want to access this page login with the correct credentials correct role then only you can access that page so that's why i wanted to provide the login path okay so this is how we can just add the authentication middleware with your application once you add the authentication middleware you have to use that middleware so like this here we can add the authentication and at the end here we can use the authentication okay app dot use authentication like this now you are good to go for using sign in method for implementing this authentication to do item okay how to implement that so first of all in order to implement this what you will need to do uh, we have just configured the authentication uh, we have we, we haven't configured the authorization as of now we will do that later now if i go to my login controller there i need to add some claims okay so let me add some code here okay so this to do item will be this one now i will explain this code see who is logging that user's information i require okay so this login api is returning me one response okay in that response what are all things i will get i will need to check that first okay so i will get uh, whether it is success or not and whether it is error message it is only returning true okay so basically if i log in this login api should return me the additional information about currently logged in user like what is their first name what is your last name role all these things this login api should return but currently it is not returning okay so we need to change this api first login api we need to change okay so this login api is available inside talent to track api project so let's go to that project talent to track api stop this running mode go to the login controller account controller okay here and click on the account controller find the login api this is your login api so login api response should have one more return type here that is user details okay user this user object we will return when login credentials are correct okay how to return that so i will add verify login details method is there inside that we what we are doing we are basically by using the account repository we are getting the login details db user right so db user we are getting from the database okay so what is this db user is it is login details and in the login details we are having username password is blocked and there is one user object as well okay this is a foreign key and i want this user details too so basically i want to return this user information user information has first name last name email contact number and their role basically i wanted to return this user as a part of response so how i can do that i will enter username and password i will get a user 
is equal to null then invalid credential user is not equal to null then in response here i will there is a user field we have just added right this one here i will just add db user dot user okay there is user field available it can be null so that's why this exclamation mark okay so this user we will return as a part of user field okay and this user field should be starting capital u and it can also null so that's why question mark okay and this user need to make it as a capital and just build this project that's it this api project right click rebuild now we have modified the login api in order to return the logged in user information we require that information for session object okay session means whenever i will log in i will require what is the role of the current logged in user what is uh, the name of the current logged in user what is the email of that user all these things i require now in order to reflect that newly added property we need to refresh the reference of our this swagger client right so in the swagger client if you see we are only having two fields as of now in the login request this is login request okay and i want login response so response is available here this one this one is login response in the login response i only has two fields success and error message on top of it i also require the user information so that i need to refresh this uh, reference so go to the connected services and refresh it okay right click manage connected services there is one swagger client we have added go here click on the refresh and yes once you do that let, let me check updating service reference from this fail to download metadata from okay so this is not working we need to run the app, this api project first and then only it will start working okay i have just run the api project and now if i go to the front end application close this and here if i click on the refresh button it will get refresh okay it got refresh now you can see click on the save button you can see if i go to the login response you will get the user property as well got it so this user property came from the database it has these many things it has its id created date updated date created by updated by first name last name email contact number roles everything is now available so this information we require for authentication purpose so what we can do we can do like this response dot success and response dot user is not equal to null okay if it is not null then add some claims okay what kind of claims claims means what claims means additional information about the current user i want to add currently logged in users username okay so username is not available here username is available here so we can just use that like this okay i want to add user id as well so that user id is available inside response dot user dot id id is this and this is integer and i guess it is looking for string okay so if that is the case we can make it as a two string it will remove this error got it now in the for loop it is trying to add the role into the claim but we are having only one role per customer per user right so we can just add it here 
like this and you can just remove this for loop not required that's it so new claim let's do one thing let's keep it like this only remove the for loop because we only have one role per user okay so claims dot add role and we are having role inside the user property so we can add role like this <clears throat> got it so role should be also string let's make it a string got it that's it so this is how we can just add <clears throat> add name user id and role okay let's do like this it will also work let's remove this that's it now we have added some additional information about currently logged in user into the claims why it is crying it is expected yeah i think we forgot to close this here <clears throat> now identity we are having so there is a new identity these claims we will add into the identity and here authentication scheme okay it is our cookie based authentication and now there is a principle object we need to create on the basis of identity and by using this principle we can actually log in to your identity provider okay so we have logged in like this by using signing async authentication scheme and this principle principle generated from the identity identity generated from the claims in this i also wanted to add a first name and last name as well so let me check if i can add my custom value here <clears throat> full name yes we can add so we can add full name like this dollar then curly braces user dot first name space curly braces user dot last name okay so this is how we can also add the custom claim so that way we can access this value in order to display the full name of currently logged in user inside the dashboard okay we don't require session object this time because we will use it from the claims so basically we have logged into our system if it is success we are checking user object is not null if it is not null we are trying to log in into the identity provider so whatever lines i have selected here this is nothing but it will just try to log in into the identity provider okay once you sign in you can redirect to the to the dashboard sorry admin controller and dashboard page that's it now let's try it okay let's try it so this to do is also completed that's it this is your authentication not authorization okay so if i go to the admin there is a dashboard page once i log in successfully then it should redirect me to the to the dashboard page along with the currently logged in users information i am just adding the breakpoint here click on the uh, run this project okay so there is some error too many errors let's see why those are errors. swagger client hmm. server side error get by id async let me rebuild fail okay because of these errors in the swagger client okay get by id there is id async let me check in the api project go to the courses model
we have added this action create get all this is throwing the error okay create by id it's is throwing get by id throwing the error then this is okay i think it does not allows or uh, want us to add the id like this so you can just get the id from query string so i'm just going to remove this one okay now hot deploy applying code changes changes applied go here in the front end project and now right click on connected services manage connected services and here you can refresh yes so once you refresh it will refresh the code of this uh, swagger client.cs file and you can see there is no error now okay so this is how we can just remove find the root cause of the error and resolve them now if you right click and rebuild it will restore the packages rebuild it and then you can run it smoothly yeah rebuild succeeded now you can run this project Can you see the browser window? No. Okay. So I can do one thing. Let's run it here. okay i hope uh, this is visible now okay now uh, you can see if i try to log in add username and password click on the login so it will basically call the post action method from the account controller in the front end project and from that project it will try to call api login api from the <clears throat> okay it is returning the error message One or more error occurs could not deserialize the response body stream as login response. Okay. Let me check uh, what happened in the API project. Go here. You can add the breakpoint. Now, let's call that API again. Refresh. Continue. And then this is API project. Let's see what is the error. We are going inside. <coughs> Go here. Verify the credentials from the database. We got the record. Okay. And in this record, we are having all the information, but user is null. This should not be null actually. That's the problem. Okay. So we need to make sure we are returning user correctly from the database. So when we are making the database query inside this function, okay, by using the link queue. So DB context or TBA login details where we are doing this. Here we can do dot include. And here you can just add pointer p dot user. Okay, so this way it will allow you to bind, allow you to join one more table. We are having login details table 
we are having users table so it will join user table from the login details if you add virtual keyword here okay and if you add include function while querying to the database so it will basically join those two tables will return the data from the both the tables now rerun the application okay uh, in the front end application let's run it and fire the login command again so admin one two three login so it will again go to the login api now let's see if it is returning uh, user information from the database or not now see if i go to the db object you can see user is there user information is there email id first name last name all the information we got from the database so we got to know how we can join two tables by using the link queue or lambda expression for that you will have to use include function okay by using this include function you can join two tables okay but make sure whenever you are using include function that property should have the virtual keyword then only you can able to join two tables using the link queue lambda expression now return this response to the front end front end we got success true see we got success true and then inside the success true we are checking whether user is not null obviously it is not null because we are having the user information here so this we will add into the claims okay okay we successfully added into the claims we are having the claims array having four values okay first name admin admin last name all these things now inside okay let, let me check what is there in the name what is there in the identifier all these things so we are having four first is name name has admin value is admin okay username is admin then name identifier has id id is two role has okay role is uh, underscore one let me check what is there inside the role so role okay this is wrong okay it should have admin one two three all these things let me check into the api project what is there inside the role so if you go to the user object and then a role we are having admin, sub admin, trainer, student. So, not sure why this enum not get reflected into the front end project here. Let me stop. For time being, I am just replacing these values with this. Okay, later we will address it. Now, I got the role enum properly. Let's run this application again. Enum is for giving the appropriate name for numbers what is two two means sub admin what is three three mean trainer what is one one means admin so we can give the proper name to your numbers okay now go to the browser window run your front end application hit the api one two three click on login once you click on login it will go to the api project continue it will go to the front end project okay you can see this is your front end project now here in the front end project if i debug i have added the claims and then in the role i should have admin or one something still not there user role has underscore okay i'll figure it out give me a minute so let's continue principle and this sign in method provided by microsoft will basically do the authentication okay it will just sign in to the application and now we are redirecting to the dashboard page let's continue if i continue you can see in the browser i am at the dashboard page and click on the save button got it so this is how we can implement authentication with your application okay I wanted to change first name and last name here. Okay. 
so how we can do that so basically we have logged into the system and dashboard page is now visible i wanted to change the first name and last name who is whoever is logging that name should be visible here so how we can do that so basically in the uh, cshtml file we need to read that information okay so let me read the information from the uh, identity provider So what we can do, so if I go to the front end project, there is a dashboard page we have created. Go to the dashboard page where it is inside the admin controller, dashboard, right click, go to the view. Okay. Here we have added welcome first name, last name. Instead of this first name, last name, I wanted to read it from the identity. Okay. So let's do that. We can just add first of all we can determine the first name last name so first name we can determine from, from user find first value okay and here we can provide the key what key we had given full name right something find first and here we can provide the key so this key should be match with this key in the account controller we have added the full name something right this is key so full name should not have space so this key should be matched with that and then you will get the full name and this full name we can just basically print here welcome at the rate this one that's it okay and also we can do the same thing into the layout page as well if I go to the layout page here shared layout here also if you recall we have added first name first name instead of that I wanted to print this full name okay now stop rebuild remove all the breakpoints because we know it is working fine delete all breakpoints yes so it will not hit the breakpoint in the front end project as well go to delete all breakpoints click on yes okay so it will basically uh, directly run the application without any interruption okay so this is your browser now go back log out or login page here <clears throat> let's say i have added admin one two three click on the login page so if you click on the login button you can see here we are showing admin admin full name colon admin admin full name colon admin admin okay there is a problem it is also showing full name which is not correct this key we don't want okay we want value only so let me check find first and then value is not there ah oh, we can do like this okay value is the property and it can be null so question mark you need to add so same thing copy go to the dashboard add here and then hot deploy 
once you do the hot deploy it will just remove this full name from here as well as here you can see welcome admin admin and here also admin admin now you will see uh, so why this is admin admin here why it is not first name and last name the reason is our admin user in the database is not having uh, any specific name we have just added first name admin last name admin if you change it into the database it will work you can see if i go to the api project uh, view then server explorer here expand your uh, server data connection click on refresh add connection let's say SQL Server continue. Server name is. Let me check the connection string first. Okay, so you can check the connection string in data project, DAO project. Okay. Sorry, in the app setting.json file. We are having this connection string. Or I can open it in SSMS as well. Let me open that. Okay, so if you see this database, SSMS, uh, SQL Server Management Studio, here we are having our database. In this, uh, if you see here, we are having user table. If I right click, go to the edit mode. I will add first name, let's say. What was Sagar Patil? Okay, let's say. So this name should be reflected into the dashboard page now. Now let's try again. So if I rerun the project, let's wait. refresh there should be a logout button as well right we haven't implemented the logout functionality so let's do that first so without logout we cannot directly go to the login we can do that but this is not the right way we should have a logout functionality as well so let me add admin credentials login once you log in it will go to the dashboard and it will also print Sagar Patil here. You can see Sagar Patil. So this is basically dynamic content. It is coming from the database and we are also maintaining the session for the currently logged in user. It is very important and this is how we can just implement authentication to your application. Okay. Now uh, in the next session, we will learn how to do the crude operation to the courses. But before that, we also need to learn how to implement authorization. So this Sagar Patil, if does not have the access to manage courses menu, then he should be able to go to the login page automatically. So that authorization part is remaining. Okay. We have just learned the authentication, but before signing off this session, I think we should complete this logout functionality as well. So how we can implement the logout functionality? It is very straightforward. Go to your uh, account controller, add one more action method. Okay. So this is login we can add logout or sign out okay so in the sign out action method sign out okay sign out action method you you will need to add one one line okay only one line so that line is basically will sign out from your application okay if you see this line http context dot sign in okay 
so that way it will sign in and you want to sign out so you will need to add this line that's it http context sign out and your scheme name scheme name is already available okay so this way we can just sign in and sign out with your application once you sign out you should be able to redirect to the login page so that's why we need to add this line as well i wanted you to redirect on account slash login page that's it now if you run oh one more thing this sign out action you will have to call from the sign out menu bar sign out button logout button how to call it just add at the rate url dot action and then sign out from account controller this is how we can call any action method from the ui if you click on this button it will call this action from the account controller if you go to the account controller it will give a call to this once your call come here it will sign out from your application and then it will redirect to the login page okay this is the right way to do the sign out from your application okay let's test it okay now let me show you the sign out functionality as well okay this is your dashboard so you can see in the dashboard sagar patil has been logged in now i have added one breakpoint into the sign out action method here i want to see how it will work and then if i click here click on the logout button you can see this breakpoint got triggered and then it will first of all sign out from your application and then it will go to the login page and you can see login page has been open in the browser now if you manually go to the dashboard page here dashboard where it is located in the admin dashboard then it is opening that page but sagar patil now name is not there here also not there now as you know dashboard page should not be accessible without login right because i haven't logged in into my account how this dashboard page is visible to me for that purpose we need to implement authorization if user does not log in don't display any of the page so that is authorization and we will see that into the next session i will pause here okay thank you everyone